Section 1 of Music by Ursula Creighton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 1 Early Music. Music has always enhanced the joy of life, and from earliest times it is certain that man has enjoyed music. From records of all periods, we know how music entered into the life of all kinds of people in innumerable ways. Music was used for dancing and singing and it made sound which was not just noise, but a beauty in itself, to which men could listen for hours with many different but always pleasurable feelings. In these ways, music has always given pleasure and still does. Even now, on the South African veldt, you may meet a kafir with a rude instrument made of little pieces of metal wired onto wood, each giving a different note and he will play over and over to himself the quiet, twanging sounds. Again, anyone who travels in Arab countries may hear an Arab shepherd in some secluded spot playing quietly to himself on a soft-toned pipe. Such pipes have been used for thousands of years. There are pictures of them on Greek vases. Some have been found in Egyptian tombs, and two of these Egyptian pipes are in the Ashmolean Museum at Oxford. This pipe is just a reed, like a bamboo, with a little mouthpiece and a few holes cut down the front over which the fingers can be placed in order to change the notes. The Arab shepherd plays very few notes over and over again, making pleasing, peaceful music. Music has developed and become much more intricate than such primitive sounds, but in olden days everyone enjoyed music, not at concerts, for they did not exist then, but in their daily life. In the days of our forefathers, when each nobleman's hall was the one room in which all members of the household, from the highest to the lowest, ate their meals or sat at their indoor occupations, life was very primitive, but a great deal of music went on. Each season of the year had special festivities. For instance, in springtime, the peasants would decorate themselves with flowers and leaves and go in procession dancing through the fields. They would bring branches out of the woods and choose a king or queen to rule them. At harvest and other times, there were special ceremonies with dancing, music, and singing, in which many joined. Such festivities were very frequent, and some of these amusements still survive in the May Day dances and Christmas mummers who come round to sing and act. Wherever there was a monastery, there was music in the church services, and at certain festivals, plays to music were part of the service. Not the least enjoyable were the visits of wandering minstrels, for minstrels traveled and came from foreign countries, bringing news and providing with their music one of the greatest pleasures then known. So we know that a great deal of music went on, and we can trace something of how music developed from simple, primitive sounds to the music we hear now. But of the actual sounds of early music, we know very little. The notes used to make music have altered. The instruments used have changed. And in early times, there were no means of writing music down. It was all learned by ear, and much has been lost. But we know what a power music was how it was used on all occasions, and how invariably it accompanied the many amusements and festivities that then existed. It is in European life that we find the most vivid picture of the influence and pleasure of music in daily life in innumerable ways, and it is in European music that we trace the development of sound from the few notes first recorded to the complicated but beautiful works we hear at modern concerts. But music, of course, existed not only in Europe, but all over the world. And some music of very ancient date from countries outside Europe still survives practically unchanged. Chinese music, for instance, can still be heard sounding as it did thousands of years ago. It is used on all state occasions and for all religious ceremonies. And the notes are sacred and may not be changed. Special metal tubes are kept which fix the notes, and the laws by which music is made are also unchangeable. This ceremonial Chinese music sounds noisy to us, for it is all accompanied by gongs and bells. 
we get far more feeling of the charm and influence of music when we hear of a special instrument called a kin, which Confucius loved. He would shut himself up with it for weeks, enraptured with the sounds it made, so soft they were, like the breathing of the wind in the trees, and so full of mystery. Indian music provides another music of ancient date, which we can still hear and which is also very unlike European music. For one thing, Indian music has notes unlike ours. We never hear in our music sounds so close to each other that they seem to glide up and down like the song of a bird or the sound of wind. But Indian music is made partly with such sounds. Indian musicians accompany themselves on a stringed instrument, and while they sing, they play continuously two notes, called a drone. Such sound is very unusual to our ears. Almost the only music Europeans now hear with a drone is that of the bagpipe. The bagpipe plays a droning note all the time as well as the tune to which we listen. It is a very ancient instrument. The Greeks and Romans used it, and it was played in the Middle Ages. When we listen to it, we realize how stirring and stimulating music made with it can be, even if it seems harsh compared with the music to which we are now accustomed. End of section one, read by Martha Weller, Champaign, Illinois, February 17, 2024.